I want us to read very quickly 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It's a, it's a very interesting passage that we all know. But for some reason, you know, we've never really broken it down. It says, if my people who are called by my name. Now, who is this addressed to? My people who are called by my name. Christians, you and I, my people called by my name, will humble themselves and, seek my, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Bottom line is this. It's a formula. It's a formula that God has given us to heal our land. Okay? And we all know this formula. And we all push this formula many times. But there's something that we're not doing. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. First thing is this. Why, why humble? A humble person is an obedient person. The only reason why a man will stand and disobey his maker is because he elevated himself to a point where he thinks he qualifies to do things his own way and not the way that his creator determined that he should do it. It's called pride. So when it says humble yourself, it's saying that when you start to obey God in all that he asks, so it's a list of things. And let's even assume we've humbled ourselves and we're doing things the way God asks. There is a main point I'm getting to where obviously we are not doing. And it has to do with identity. Humble themselves and pray. We all know that as Nigerians, we pray a lot. As Christians in this country, we do what? We pray. Amen? Has God healed the land yet? I don't think so. Because if you think this land is healed, then you, you know, obviously you have no idea what God has in mind for you. This, see, I told you this. God gave me a vision once that before the, found, like, at the foundation of time, before this was even cut out as Nigeria, God put the resources and he put the people. It's, it's a resourceful land. In the world, Nigeria is one of the most enriched countries with natural resources. One of the most. In fact, it's hard to find another country. Maybe South Africa with diamonds. Maybe. I'm not sure. But, but, but this region of the world is, is one of the richest when it comes to mineral resources and just everything. And the people are strong. I mean, they call me a giant in China. I mean, I, I go to Asia and they say, that guy's a giant. I say, come to my country. You know I am not a giant. Okay? And look at the weather. Weather is good. I can live outside all year long. You, you can hardly do that anywhere. And the land is good. God expected a garden of Eden here. I'm not even kidding. Before man came and messed stuff up because they didn't know their identity, I promise you that this was supposed to be an Eden. A place where things grow. I mean, Japan only has like 20% arable land. You can only grow things in 20% of Japan. Singapore has like none. Singapore imports all their food. Do you know how much land we have here? That's arable. You can plant crops here. You know, this was supposed to be an Eden. But because we did not know our identity, we got into you know, stealing and theft and cheating and corruption and all sorts of wickedness. See where we are today. People are dying in hospitals. People are dying on the roads. People are, 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 are you know, things aren't where they, where they should be. We've lost a lot. NEPA, incubators, stuff is going on. We, are, we, we have lost too much because we don't know, we, we, we have not known our identity. This teaching is a teaching that has to keep going till we change. There's something about when you know who you are and you live your life according to the, to the will of God, things work. Do you know how much money are in private individuals' accounts that should be for roads? Do you know how many people are dying on the roads because of the potholes? Incubators are not working. Premature babies are dying. Hospitals, you have to take everything. In a country this rich, something is wrong. We need to get back to the word of God and actually listen to what the word says.